That's right. We got these in for a few. I've done about 150 kilometers in these shoes and boy oh boy have I got some things that I like about them and dislike. Let's get the basics about the shoes. Well, luckily enough, most shoe manufacturers nowadays actually print most of the details on the shoe. So they weigh 240 grams. In my size, actually 285 grams for a 46 and two thirds. They have a stack height of 27 millimeters in the heel and 19 in the forefoot, which gives it an eight millimeter drop. As a trail running shoe, the lug depth, the grip, the tread underneath is always super important as well. And that is 2.5 millimeters. I paid 200 euros out of my own pocket for these shoes and well that is a lot of money for a pair of running shoes nowadays and mm, I'm sure if you go online nowadays you can probably get a good discount on it but when I got it initially and you can see my first impressions and first review which is in the link down below but of course while you're here is to understand why maybe you should buy this shoe or if you've got any doubts or questions if you have these shoes also well obviously not these exact ones but if you have a pair of these shoes as well please leave down your review comments and thoughts down in the comments section section down below. That way anybody finding this video can also find out a little bit more as well. Before we get too far into the video, I really do want to stress one thing that buying a new pair of running shoes is not going to make you a better runner necessarily. It can help because it motivates you to get out there and everything and that's a great thing. But if you really want to improve your performance, I think it's really important to invest in maybe like a proper training plan, a coach and invest time into making some consistency into running for yourself. Enough of all of that, plenty of videos on the YouTube channel. We're here to talk about these. Starting from the base of the shoe and going up, what I really do love about this shoe is the grip. Adidas have hit the nail on the head by using the Continental Grip, again, in the trail running shoes. In my eyes, probably one of the best ones out there. I used to run a lot in Hoka shoes and the Vibram Mega Grip is really good. And I would say this probably just edges it by a little bit. The lug depth, as I said, 2.5 millimeters. So it's more geared to a hard ground trail rather than a soft ground. It has got multi-directional lugs. So if you're running uphill or downhill, that will have some bite and grip into it, which is really good kind of addition. Some trail shoes, they just have like lugs that stick out. As for the midsole in the forefoot, it has light strike and in the heel, it has the boost. So the boost is gonna be giving you a little bit more energy return maybe and also so it takes a little bit more of that impact and pounding. So I think that's a really good thing in the trails because if you're running downhill or maybe your stride gets a little bit lazy, you do have a little bit more forgiving there. And the mixture of the two compounds work really well. I love this in the Adidas Boston Nines, which are the road running shoe. And that's exactly why I paid 200 euros for these because I love the Boston Nines. And these are pretty much a trail running shoe of them. The upper and the materials that it's constructed of is really good, high quality materials. Very much like their Adi Zero lineup. It's got a very mesh, which is kind of durable, not plastic fabric on the top which is also reinforced but very thin also. The heel on the shoe is quite nice it's got a little bit of support there and then also a nice gusseted tongue which is pretty standard in most running shoes nowadays but it's nice that it's there that it helps keep that foot in place and give a little extra comfort more so to the point. The materials used in this no not watch this is my watch They're used in the shoe are built for durability and I really like that that they're building a shoe to last a long time and uh, if you're going to pay a big price I definitely would expect that it's going to last me a while have durability and that I can use it day in day out and in many conditions aesthetics wise well that's all subjective we all have different opinions of what colors are best I like the colorway I don't love it but I think it's nice and colorful and yeah it's, it's just nice to have a bit of color in your life isn't it so let's get into the things what I do like and don't like about this shoe. As you heard in the beginning, I paid 200 euros for these shoes and I think that's just ridiculous for a pair of running shoes that nowadays they have probably like 1,000 kilometers or they advise you to change them every 1,000 kilometers. I just can't understand why they priced it at that point. There is no, as I said, like some special mechanism in it. It's just, well, it's just a running shoe. And that's one of the things that I love about it. It's a running shoe and it feels comfortable when you run. So. Yeah, good, but price-wise, mm. one thing that I really struggled with these shoes is the laces. Now they have this semi-hard coated on it, 
And what happens with that is whenever I try and tie them up, every third run or something, the shoelace kind of comes undone. I do have other Adidas shoes where they have like the softer fabric laces and they work perfect and they just stay in place all the time. But I think this hard coating, because I guess it's going through trails and mud and everything, it doesn't just have that bite in staying in place for me. Now for many people out there when they see this shoe and they see that it's meant for the trails and everything, they're going to look at the stack height. So what I mean by the stack height is the difference from where the foot is and to the surface. So here is about 27 millimeters in the heel and 19 in the forefoot and that's quite low to the ground for most trail running shoes that you're going to be doing an ultra in but i don't see it as a negative for myself because i think that it helps to improve your running form because when we have these you know cushions that are just like stuck underneath the feet you kind of get lazy and as a result of having all these high stack height shoes with lots of cushioning we forget where we're landing and everything and then when our form deteriorates that's when our body can be under stress in the wrong places. So having a lower stack height shoe can help to kind of, you know, bring you back into your own body in a way and make you realize that how your running form is. So it's in the disadvantages in the sense that it is a low stack height shoe, but that can actually be used to your advantage. And I think that's like in life in general, isn't it? Some people see things as a negative and some see it as a positive. So if you're going to be using this shoe in the wet and muddy terrain, it's not gonna have that good grip. 2.5 millimeter lug depth is not that good for a trail shoe, but I will caveat that with the fact that muddy terrain, no matter what lug depth you're wearing, it gets pretty slippy out there. So if you're on some kind of hard packed trail or there is just a trail, some rocks and roots and stuff, that's fine. But if you're gonna be running through thick mud, maybe it's not the right shoe. That leads me very well on to my positive. One thing that this shoe excels in is that it dries pretty quickly. When you get it wet, the water goes in and I think it goes out pretty quickly as well. Because the fabric, the water drains through it and it's not retained in the shoe, which is good because obviously when you get moisture within your shoe, a dry shoe, helps to prevent blisters and obviously that's a really important thing but yeah i found that this shoe dries pretty quickly and you know I, that's just a big bonus for me because when you're running on trails when it gets wet it's raining or you're running through a creek or a little river or something the biggest thing that i like about these shoes is that it does everything i went on a weekend away recently and i wasn't going to be sure if i was going to be running on the roads or if i was going to be on the trails is it going to be wet is it going to be dry am i going to be doing some faster running or whatever this shoe i feel like just does it all as i said i love the boston 9 which is a road running shoe this is pretty much the boston 9 but just with trail features and the beauty about it is the fact that you can take those trail features go running on the roads and you don't realize that you're running in a trail shoe. I have the Speed Goat 4s and they're big and clunky. When you're running on a road with those trail shoes, you, you can tell you're wearing a trail shoe. When you're wearing these, you don't notice it and you're just floating around and I just love that about those shoes. Also, most of us don't have the luxury of to be able to go right out of the door onto a trail. So we do have some transition period from like asphalt to trails and vice versa and that is perfect reason why this shoe would accelerate with trail runners because it can do both of those things and run comfortably and well also earlier as i was talking about the durability the continental grip on the sole of the shoe that is super durable and running on the asphalt which tears away at rubber then going onto the trails when you do need the grip and everything, it's gonna be durable for that. So as you can tell, I really like the fact that I can use this on pretty much all terrain. Another small detail that really like warmed my heart is the fact that when the shoes came and you know they have the little labels on it, it was not a little plastic piece, it was made out of like a recycled cotton fabric string, something like that. Little actions like that help to lead big steps and I just love it. So there we go, that's it in a nutshell. That's my review of the Adidas Terex Speed Ultras. I really do enjoy them. The price, I don't enjoy so much. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to watch this video, it really does mean a lot. If you're not subscribed already, as I said, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.